Hello friends, let us now learn some important points about the splenic cyst, types of splenic cysts. Actually, we have already learned about the two types, simple and complex splenic cysts. Then the different types of splenic cysts, one more classification is most common we have primary congenital cysts, pseudocysts, hydrated cysts and uncommon are pancreatic pseudocysts, lymphangiomas, hemangiomas, angiosarcomas and cystic metastasis. So if you see in the splenic cysts, one important thing is that these splenic cysts are actually asymptomatic. They are asymptomatic. Most of the splenic cysts today are asymptomatic. These are actually discovered incidentally in routine ultrasonographic examination. So generally these cysts, splenic cysts most commonly can be either a congenital cyst or they can be pseudocyst. Most commonly they can be either a congenital cyst or pseudocyst. Okay, generally they are asymptomatic, but sometimes if the patient develops certain complications, if patient develops certain complications like if there is any internal hemorrhage in the cyst, that is any bleeding inside the cyst, or if there is any infection or any rupture of the cyst, in these cases the patient may develop some symptoms or else the mostly the splenic cysts are asymptomatic. So the first type is epidermoid cyst or primary congenital cyst. So we have primary congenital or epidermoid cysts. Okay, these primary congenital cysts are also called as epidermoid cysts or they also call, they are also called as true cysts. Okay, these primary congenital cysts, cysts are actually uh, developed from the primitive mesothelial cells. Actually, in the spleen, inside the spleen, we have spleen, inside the spleen, we have primitive mesothelial cells. So, through this primitive mesothelial cells, the primary congenital or epidermoid cysts or true cysts develop from this uh, primitive mesothelial cells. Then these cysts are actually uh, well defined cysts. Initially they are well defined and they are also like simple cysts. They are thin walled and echogenic cysts. They are thin, sorry, well defined, thin walled, and they are anechoic initially. But slowly they will transform into this mass like lesion. So, this is, this is also a picture of primary congenital or epidermoid cyst, which shows, see here, this is not, this does not have same echogenicity. Here you will see the light, you will see whiter areas and darker areas also. That means you will see hyperechoic areas that is whiter areas and hypoechoic areas which are darker areas are also seen. So because there are two types of areas which are seen it is actually a heterogeneous material is present inside the system. Okay then if you see here surrounding you can see increased or whiteness or increased echogenic area is present. So this is actually uh, this uh, this rim is actually the echogenic area which is present around it, posterior acoustic enhancement. So, surrounding echogenic area is present. Then we have, this is also a cyst and in this cyst also you can see these are actually internal echoes. So, you can see the internal echoes are present here. So, this is a CT picture showing primary epidermoid or primary congenital or epidermoid or true cyst. Actually, these primary cysts will also start similar to this simple cyst. But slowly as the days progresses, 
His primary congenital cyst, which has started, has well defined thin walled and a cyst will form as a heterogeneous structure showing internal echoes also. Okay, so in this primary congenital cyst, you will, if you do a histopathological examination, you will see that this is a cyst which has an epithelial lining. So, in the histopathological examination, you will see presence of epithelial lining is present. So, this is one of the things. And it is mainly developed from, if you see the origin has already discussed, it is developed from embryonic rests. That is, those of uh, the cells of the embryo which are present in the adult. So, these are, these are developed from embryonic rests of primitive mesothelial cells present in the spleen. That means mesothelial cells in the spleen. That means inside the spleen actually, actually spleen is developed from mesothelial cells. But these mesothelial cells are converted into the splenic, splenic tissue, right? White, white pulp and red pulp. But there might be certain areas in the spleen which contain these primitive mes mesothelial cells. And those are called as embryonic rests. So, from these embryonic rests, this primary congenital or epidermoid or true cyst arises. Then, the next type of cyst is called as pseudocyst. Okay, so the next type of cyst is pseudocyst. Pseudocyst has the name says it is also called as false cyst. Here the main difference is that if you do a histopathological examination of pseudocyst, this pseudocyst has no cellular lining. There is no cell wall lining or there are no cells lining the pseudocyst. So if you see in the primary congenital or epidermoid cyst, you will see presence of this epithelial lining. But this epithelial lining is absent in the pseudocyst or false cyst. Okay, the main cause or increased risk of pseudocyst occurs, it mostly occurs secondary to trauma, that is after trauma, as a consequence of trauma, it can occur, it can occur secondary to infarct or infection. So, pseudocyst or false cyst occurs secondary to trauma, infarct or infarction. So, because they occur secondary to these trauma, infarct and infarctions, these pseudocysts are most commonly complex cysts with the wall calcifications and internal echoes. So, they, they are complex cysts with wall calcifications and internal echoes. So, if you see the picture, see, this is a simple cyst, right? This is a simple cyst. How did you describe it? It is actually a this simple cyst is actually a well-defined lesion. This is a well-defined and it is anechoic that is completely black. So, it is called as anechoic lesion is seen. Okay, this is simple cyst which is actually primary congenital cyst can be a simple cyst. Okay, but look at this. This is actually a complex cyst. Why see these are... These are some calcifications are seen and here if you see the wall is thickened. So, this thickened wall is present here. So, obviously this is actually a pseudocyst. Okay and if you see here this has two cysts, see, two cysts are present. And if you see this one, this has irregular borders are seen in this cyst. So, this is also a pseudocyst. So, this is one important thing. Then, then how are you going to differentiate whether it is an primary congenital or epidermoid cyst or whether it is a pseudocyst? Right, we have primary congenital epidermoid cyst or pseudocyst. 
how are you going to differentiate them? So actually, if you see, there are overlapping uh, features, overlapping features are present between the congenital, primary congenital or epidermoid cyst and pseudocyst. It is actually difficult to differentiate between this primary congenital or epidermoid cyst and pseudocyst. One important thing is in pseudocyst, history of trauma or infection may be present. And in both the cysts, you will see the complex cysts, both are actually complex cysts with wall calcification is present in both the cysts. Uh, you can also see uh, there is increased echogenicity is seen in the fluid also. Increased echogenicity in fluid is seen mainly by the cholesterol crystals. Due to whenever the fluid contains cholesterol crystals or any debris or hemorrhage, you will see increased echogenicity in the fluid. So this is also present in both primary congenital or epidermoid system. So if you see here, you will see increased echogenicity, right? So this increased echogenicity can be uh, due to a cholesterol presence of cholesterol crystals or it can be due to hemorrhage present in the cyst or it can be due to debris. Okay, so differentiation is very difficult between the primary congenital uh, or epidermoid cyst and pseudocyst. So thank you.